Mark Shapps joins us now. Good morning to you. Morning. Does the UK government believe it's possible to move a million people in 24 hours? I think it's very important that Israel does provide uh, information about its intentions, because as you rightly say, uh, we have been making the point, President Biden did this, Blinken yesterday, and the UK, myself, the Foreign Secretary and Prime Minister, that it is um, the case that we want to enable uh, Hamas to be uh, removed from the scene, but to do so in a manner that does not affect Palestinian uh, population as far as is possible. And the difficulty is that Hamas hide themselves within that population deliberately as a deliberate policy, using the population as human shields. So Israel is letting people know in advance, and we very much support uh, the advance notice being given. Right, but do, do we support the order itself? Do do you, as the UK government, think it mm. is an achievable thing for a million people to move by this time tomorrow, indeed less than by this time tomorrow? Well, look, the, the, the extraordinary thing is, of course, that, and I've just come back from a defence uh, meeting at NATO in Brussels, where we were shown the footage, incredibly distressing, of what Hamas did last weekend, where they beheaded children and dragged people through the streets, sometimes without their heads, uh, and are intent on not just destroying Israel, but in their very charter, Hamas as a terrorist organization, to uh, to kill all Jews. So they're dealing, Israel are dealing with an organization that will literally stop at nothing, and are using the Palestinian population as human shields. Now, we've said to Israel, of course, that it's important to act within, within international law. Is this and order course, within international do, law? I say, of course, what you do is make sure that you're providing uh, warnings. And uh, Israel would say that they not only have been having leaflets, not only using a, a knock and drop technique, which is where a small uh, but uh, non lethal explosive goes off to warn people to move, uh, but also now issued these broader warnings of their intention. Uh, uh, and as I say, they are in a, a position where they have the right to defend themselves as a the country the, the question is the question scared... is the question is how and i think it's really important to be absolutely clear about your view as the uk government of this order of the israeli military because as jeremy made clear to us we are in completely uncharted territory in recent times there has never been an order of this kind it amounts to moving to to wanting the population of half of the territory of gaza not to be there anymore does the uk government support that order so we've never been in these times in as much as we've never seen a country have 1,300 people slaughtered by terrorists. If you scale that up to brilliant Britain size, it would be thousands of Brits uh, slaughtered by uh, terrorists uh, coming into the country and doing that. And you'd expect Britain, and in this case, you'd expect Israel to have the right to defend itself. Now, if those terrorists then hide themselves from the populations, it is right to give that population uh, notice so that they can move. So we certainly... support them then. You you think it is possible for a million people to be moved within 24 hours, and you support the UK go You support the Israeli government in issuing this order. Well, I think it's absolutely right that the Israeli government are providing uh, warning to citizens. That's not, uh, I'm afraid, a luxury. No, about the, the order Israelis itself. Just tell us what the UK them. government thinks of this order. Does I, it? I just. So, I, I just, so we support I just it, right? You. Right. OK. Just so just just so everyone's absolutely clear, the UK government supports Israel in ordering a million people to move out of half of Gaza in 24 hours. The, the UK government supports Israel in providing advance notice uh, that Hamas are hiding within a civilian population, where, by the way, they're also holding a capture of those people who they kidnapped at the weekend. You're not and answering my question. So I'm, I'm still not sure whether the UK government supports this order of the Israeli military. I think you're literally the only person listening to this who would be confused by this. I've just said that the UK government supports Israel's right both to defend itself and in this uh, way, the, and that Israel is providing an advance warning of military action in order for people to move themselves out of the way. And I think it's absolutely right that happens. And, and by the way, the United Kingdom's helping further by uh, the deployment that I've made of both ships and uh, helicopters and planes. Uh, to provide monitoring, uh, surveillance, deterrent for a wider 
uh, community, the rider region, not to get involved, and also to provide the potential for humanitarian assistance as well. So the you know the United Kingdom uh, is trying to play its part uh, in making sure that this doesn't spread further, uh, but that humanitarian assistance can be brought as well. How does the UK government expect people who are elderly, sick, disabled, or in hospital to move out of northern Gaza in 24 hours? Well, look, sadly, when mass went in the other way around, there wasn't any, there weren't any of these options. They went to just murder people. Now, the, the option for Israel is either to just ignore this and allow it to happen again, or actually deal with Hamas. And uh, you know, we think that Israel has the right to deal with Hamas. Now, uh, advance notices being um, uh, given, uh, it, it is quite right that Israel has given that advance notice. And we have made clear to Israel that it, of course, needs to act within international law and be proportionate. What is the, but there is no equivalence because Hamas don't provide the opportunities that Israel is providing. Hamas don't okay, but, tell but the, their victims before they cut the, their heads off that this, they should move. This is why it's really important to think about what is practical and possible in a place like, like Gaza. And no one who has ever been there or knows it thinks that it is possible because roads are destroyed, homes are destroyed, neighbourhoods are already flattened, people have little food, almost no fuel. And and yet you believe that they will all, 40,000 people an hour, will be able to move in the next 24 hours? Well, look, first of all, you're assume, assuming that everything instantly starts in 24 hours. Uh, well, that's not, the deadline uh, the Israeli certain... military has given. We're only going on well, what they're it, saying. It's, it... It's, it's good that they provided information in advance. And as I've repeatedly said, Hamas certainly didn't do that before. They went and slaughtered people. Uh, but secondly, um, you know, it, 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 we don't know the, the detail of the Israeli plan. We do know, and President Biden uh, downwards has made it clear that Israel will need to comply to, with international law. And I would have thought a good start is to warn people in advance that the area that they're in is likely to be part of a attack uh, where they uh, the Israelis are trying to get hold of the Hamas terrorists who you don't seem to be particularly interested in and the BBC seems to refuse to call terrorists even though the British Parliament has legislated that they are terrorists which is a question I haven't heard the BBC answer yet. Have you not seen any of the coverage on the BBC of the atrocities, the dead, the injured, the survivors? Yes I have. So how can you say that we're not interested in in those atrocities. Well, I, read, I, I read, I think it was a very unfortunate um, uh, article, I think it was by John Simpson, explaining why, although the British Parliament has legislated a map as a prescribed organisation and a terrorist, the BBC think it's not appropriate to call them terrorists. Are you aware of the Ofcom code and the rules for all broadcasters? Of course. OK, so you'll know that the Ofcom Broadcasting Code requires that news in whatever form is reported with due accuracy and presented with due impartiality. Broadcasters are not the same as newspapers and indeed all UK broadcasters stick to the same language around terrorism and these groups that the BBC is. We are not unique in this. So I, I think you are suggesting that whatever group is on the UK's list of prescribed groups at any time, that broadcasters should mirror that language? I think it's pretty clear. Um, I said, just been to NATO and seen the uh, the evidence, seen the videos of uh, innocent people being beheaded, and their pensioners being flagged off and taken uh, as hostages. I think it's pretty clear that's terrorist activity. And I think it's pretty surprising not to hear it being called that. Now, look, it, this is a, you know, perhaps a, a subplot to the bigger issue of what's happening in the Middle East, which is why we have provided, uh, I've sent out uh, two Royal Navy ships uh, to provide that, I hope, to deter malign external influence into uh, the area, to monitor, deter, prepare and provide potential humanitarian um, aid. Um, but I think when you return this to Britain and you look at, for example, Jewish schools unable to, feeling unable to open today, it would be helpful if the national broadcasts are stuck by what Parliament has legislated, and, and all broadcasters, spade spade. isn't there isn't there a isn't there a freedom of the press issue here? I don't know whether you're singling out the BBC and singling out Hamas, or whether you are calling for a change in the Ofcom broadcasting code. 
I, I was simply pointing out that I had articles on the BBC explaining why they don't think that they need to uh, uh, refer to an organisation that uh, did this most extraordinary animal-like acts at the weekend as terrorists, which is, is what they are. Okay. Hamas, it Hamas provide... had carried out, actually just on Hamas itself, it had carried mm. out atrocities before, and yet your government only placed them on the prescribed list in their entirety two years ago. Parliament has done that, and that is therefore the situation. So 11 it years be after a you came to power. Of, it, so it shouldn't really be a matter of uh, debate, and it's certainly not for okay, so, um, so, uh, news, news so, organisations so, to change that. Okay, more. so the UK government's language should be mirrored by all UK broadcasters? Well, when Parliament makes a law, that is then a law and the organisation in question of terrorists. I, we're, we're disappearing down a bit of a rabbit hole here, but I simply make the point that uh, and many other broadcasters have been asking me about the concerns within the British Jewish community, that it would be reassuring, I would have thought, if the BBC called a spade a spade. And when terrorists act in this way, uh, that there needs to be an understanding that there isn't an equivalence between going after those terrorists and trying to protect the civilian population by providing warnings, which has been the, the subject of the majority of our interview, and the way that that terrorist organisation themselves act. And I think there's an over-tendency to try to make an equivalence between the two and say, well, on one hand is this, but on the other hand is that. But the two are not equivalent in any way, shape or form. And I think it's worth saying that.